Good evening. Am I audible and visible, Lakshay Kumar? Um, am I audible and visible? If I'm audible and visible, can I get a thumbs up, please? Um, can I get a quick thumbs up from all of you? I'm not able to see the chat box. Okay, uh, thank you. So if you're joining the session for the first time, this is Dr. Shanmuga Priya. I'm professor and head of the Department of Biochemistry at Kanman Kutukudi Medical College. And I'm your Unacademy educator for biochemistry. And uh, this is a recall session for NEET PG 2023. I'll be recalling uh, all biochemistry MCQs and clinical biochemistry MCQs in this session, okay? And um, before we start the session, um, I would like you to uh, uh, participate in this. This is the NEET PG 2023 rank predictor. Uh, there are just two steps here. Enter your NEET PG score out of 800, and that will, uh, and along with that, give your roll number. That will give you a predicted rank. Okay. So, and apart from this, uh, if your aim is NEET next or NEET PG, you can just take the subscription. It has got a nine month subscription plan. The actual cost would be 37,500, but now it's available for 21,850. Okay. So if you ask me to review the paper, uh, can you all tell me what was your view about the paper? Good evening, Katyusha. What do you think? What is your review about the paper? How was the paper, all of you? Any idea? How are the topics? The choice of topics were popular, right? Yeah, there was no, there's not much of new topics apart from pharmacology having three new drugs and then uh, pathology, there was one uh, new topic. But otherwise, um, only infectious diseases. You didn't see any uh, vitamin based MCQs. So the topics that were chosen were quite popular, right? Most of these MCQs were previous year questions. But uh, the way these MCQs were handled was quite deep. Will you all agree with me on that? For example, uh, if you ask me about an MCQ which was asked in biochemistry, always questions are asked about glycogen storage disorders. And usually they ask you about von Gierke's disease, which is glycogen storage disorder type 1. But this time they chose to ask you about glycogen storage disorder type 0. Right. So that is how they differed as far as this paper is concerned. The topics were popular, but the questions that were asked were based on new concepts. OK, so I feel that there will be a high discrimination, uh, which is observed in the higher ranks. So for the first one to 500 ranks, I think there'll be good discrimination. But between 500 and 700 ranks, I think there'll be lots of crowding. Yeah, that is my understanding of the paper. And about the biochemistry part, as I told you, there were 16 MCQs and most of these MCQs were vitamin based. And it is expected, right? I always tell you, uh, only when you understand the entire metabolic pathway, you should have understood carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. Only then you'll be able to understand vitamins. And having understood that, they have framed so many questions on vitamins and there were questions on inborn errors of metabolism. Okay. So this is the first question. Uh, what is your answer? Can I raise the poll? Please try to answer this. A child presented with difficulty in vision on examination. Cherry red spots were seen on macula. There was no organomegaly identified the disease. Very good, uh, Pratyusha. Srijanjali, I'm happy that's 100% right. No, it's 83% right. Good, Sam. Good, Bhargavi. Good, uh, Madhumita. Okay. So if I ask you to summarize this question, what will be a summary? Do you see that it's a child who's presenting with neurological manifestations, right? The child presenting with neurological manifestations with cherry red spots and there was no organomegaly. Just because there are cherry red spots, can you tell me one choice which can be excluded? Because there are cherry red spots, which choice can be excluded? It is not gorgeous disease. Why won't it be gorgeous disease? I've already told you no cherry red spots in KGF. Did I give you this mnemonic? Yeah, no cherry red spots in KGF. What does KGF stand for? K stands for Crab's disease. G stands for gorgeous. F stands for Fabry's disease. 
So tell me what are the conditions wherein you don't see cherry red spots, crabs disease, gotchas disease and Fabry's disease. Which means which choice can be excluded all of you? Choice A can be excluded. And of course it's not hunter's disease. Why do you think it won't be hunter's? I told you hunter's is a mucopolysaccharidosis and in hunter's the vision has to be maintained. Yeah, you don't even expect corneal clouding. So forget about cherry red spots. So this is definitely not Hunter's disease. And why am I excluding Neiman Pick as well? Because Neiman Pick, that is organomegaly. What have they given you? There was no organomegaly. This was also specified to you by me. I said GM1 gangliosidosis will present with neurological manifestations plus organomegaly plus skeletal deformities. Right? Have I told you? Whereas GM2 gangliosidosis will present only with neurological manifestations, no organomegaly or no systemic defects. So what is the right answer here? The right answer here is Tay-Sachs disease. So all of you tell me what are the GM2 gangliosidosis? Can you keep the chat box active? What are the two GM2 gangliosidosis? One is Tay-Sachs. Right? The other one is Sandoff. Tay-Sachs and Sandoff collectively will be called as GM2 gangliosidosis. I've given you the differences between these two conditions. I said Tay-Sachs is caused by the defect of hexosaminidase A gene. Sandoff is caused by the defect of hexosaminidase B gene. Because A and B genes are defective, alpha subunit will be defective in Tay-Sachs disease, whereas beta subunit will be defective in Sandoff. And which enzyme will be defective in these two conditions? In Tay-Sachs, only hexosaminidase A enzyme will be defective. Whereas in Sandoff, there is a defect of both hexosaminidase A and B enzymes. Okay. So GM2 gangliosidosis, they present only with neurological manifestations without organomegaly. Because it's clearly stated that there is no organomegaly. Your answer should be Tay-Sachs, which is a GM2 gangliosidosis. Okay. Now, what is the right answer for this? Can you all type it in the chat box, please? A child presents with diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. So what is this? This is three Ds. Three Ds of which condition? Three Ds of pellagra. And pellagra is caused by deficiency of which vitamin? It is caused by niacin deficiency. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Madhumita. I was not seeing this chat box so far. Yes, it is niacin deficiency or vitamin B3 deficiency. So all of you, those who are watching this session, if you plan on doing uh, INICET, how many of you want to write INICET? For those of you who want to write INICET, okay, one of you, two, okay. So whenever you see diarrhea and dermatitis, yeah, whenever you see diarrhea and dermatitis, there are two conditions that you should think of. One is the three Ds of pellagra, which is niacin deficiency. The other one is acrodermatitis entropathica. The name tells you, right, acrodermatitis means dermatitis in the periphery. Yeah, perioral dermatitis or perianal dermatitis plus diarrhea. So diarrhea plus dermatitis, it can be pellagra or it can be acrodermatitis entropathica. And they had questions on both these topics. You know that, right? A child is presented with dermatitis, thinning of hair and alopecia. The family gives history of eating raw egg whites. So what is the disadvantage or what is the limitation of having a raw egg white? Can you type it in the chat box? Raw egg white is rich in avidin. And this avidin combines with biotin. So that causes biotin malabsorption. And how many of you know your friends or you having biotin capsules for good hair growth? If you want good hair growth, what are you supposed to take? You're supposed to take biotin capsules. Yeah. So uh, there is a person who's taking raw egg white. A child is having raw egg white, which has got avidin. Avidin combines with biotin that causes biotin malabsorption. And this biotin malabsorption deficiency is the reason for thinning of hair and alopecia. So what is the right answer here? The right answer here is choice C. What is the answer here? The child presented with refractory anemia. Below is provided the smear of a bone marrow biopsy of the child. So what is seen in the biopsy of the bone marrow of the child? Very good. It is 
crumpled tissue paper appearance what is that you see it is crumpled tissue paper appearance which means what is your diagnosis your diagnosis has to be gotcher's disease and gotcher's disease is caused by the defect of which enzyme it is caused by the defect of beta glucosidase okay so what is the right answer here the right answer here is beta glucoserebrosidase so all of you tell me what is beta glucosidase defect and what is alpha glucosidase defect yeah beta glucosidase defect just now i told you is gotcher's disease alpha glucosidase or acid maltase both are same yeah alpha glucosidase or acid maltase defect causes which condition pompey's disease very good pratyusha it causes pompey's disease and gotcher's disease is characterized by what in this condition when beta glucosidase is defective glucosal ceramide yeah glucosal ceramide or a cerebroside accumulates in the membranes of rbcs and platelets now macrophages they come across these rbcs and platelets with abnormal membranes so they engulf these rbcs and platelets and that causes anemia that causes thrombocytopenia and after macrophages engulf uh, these rbcs and platelets within macrophages the cell membrane of rbcs and platelets will accumulate like a fibril and this fibril accumulation is the reason for crumpled tissue paper appearance do you all understand this so what are the features of gotcher's disease gotcher's disease is caused by the defect of which enzyme for those of you are attending ini cep gotcher's disease is caused by the defect of beta glucosidase because of which glucosal ceramide or cerebroside accumulates in the membranes of rbcs and platelets and that will be engulfed by macrophages resulting in anemia thrombocytopenia then macrophages engulf this abnormal membrane the abnormal membrane debris will accumulate like fibril and that is the reason for crumpled tissue paper appearance okay and how about pompey's disease what does pompey's disease present with yeah how did i ask you to remember pump pump which is the pump of your body all of you which is the pump of your body heart so it affects heart and it presents with cardiomegaly pompey's disease will present with cardiomegaly cardiomyopathy and hypotonia so pompey's disease will present as a floppy baby okay and for both beta glucosidase defect and alpha glucosidase defect what is available enzyme replacement therapy is available okay so the answer here is beta glucosal cerebrosidase defect okay alpha glucosidase defect causes what this causes pompeys hexosaminidase a gene defect causes what just now i told you a gene defect causes tay sachs hexosaminidase b gene defect causes sandoff both tay sachs and sandoff collectively will be called as gm2 gangliosidosis what will it present as it will present with neurological manifestations with cherry red spots no organomegaly okay good pratyusha all of you please participate in the poll this is a, a tricky question right this is a very tricky question because you have to first make a diagnosis and then say what should be given as a profile axis so what is provided here there is a history of village people consuming yes osteolathyrism very good history of village people consuming a crop as a staple diet many of the villagers are now presenting with paresis and are using a stick to stand so what is it, it is osteolathyrism and this osteolathyrism is caused by intake of a crop which is called as lathyrus odoratus it is also called as grass pea yeah what we all have is green pea this is grass pea which is lathyrus odoratus and the toxin that is present in lathyrus odoratus is beta amino propionitrile 
what is it it is beta amino propionitrile which causes yeah which inhibits collagen cross linkage formation basically it inhibits lysyl oxidase beta amino propionitrile inhibits lysyl oxidase so it inhibits collagen cross linkage formation can you tell me which vitamin helps in collagen cross linkage formation which vitamin helps in collagen cross linkage formation vitamin c so if you give vitamin c as a prophylactic drug for those who are eating lathyrus odoratus as a staple diet to some extent osteolathyrism can be prevented or at least complications can be avoided so what is the right answer here the right answer here is vitamin c is that clear to all of you so it is osteolathyrism caused by the intake of lathyrus odoratus the toxin that is present is beta amino propionitrile okay yeah this is a very simple question answer this please this we have discussed so many times in classes right a family consuming predominantly of polished rice would present with which of the following vitamin deficiencies polished rice good pratyusha Polished rice causes deficiency of thiamine, right? Because thiamine is present in the alluran layer. It is present in the alluran layer of all grains, and polishing will remove this alluran layer. So, consumption of uh, uh, consumption of polished rice for a very long period of time will cause thiamine deficiency. To avoid that, we have to parboil rice. Okay. And thiamine deficiency, how will you detect? I told you this B one deficiency, one meal a day. right one meal a day is a part of keto diet what is keto trans ketolase okay so b1 or thiamine deficiency can be detected by measuring what rtc trans ketolase activity now out of this yeah uh, out of topic can you tell me what will you detect or what will you check when you suspect riboflavin deficiency riboflavin ribbon and glue go hand in hand haven't i told you haven't i told you ribbon and glue go hand in hand so whenever you suspect riboflavin deficiency you will have to estimate glutathione reductase activity okay yes then there is low insulin glucagon ratio which of the following enzymes is stimulated have we learned about this so many times yeah when there is low insulin glucagon ratio which of the following enzymes will be stimulated good pratyusha only three of you always participate in the poll now it's just two good pratyusha good sam so when they are asking you about low insulin glucagon ratio it means they are asking you what is expected when there is high glucagon when will there be high glucagon in starvation right so they are indirectly asking you which of the following enzymes will be stimulated in starvation in starvation won't you stimulate all those pathways which can increase blood glucose just tell me yes or no in starvation aim is to stimulate those pathways which can increase blood glucose what are the pathways which increase blood glucose one is glycogenolysis the other one is gluconeogenesis so in this scenario there will be stimulation of glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis and i've told you for gluconeogenesis to happen there should be parallel occurrence of peripheral lipolysis haven't i told you yeah for gluconeogenesis to happen there should be parallel occurrence of peripheral lipolysis that is done by hormone sensitive lipase so whenever there is low insulin glucagon ratio or whenever there is high glucagon hormone sensitive lipase gets stimulated and i've also explained you hormone sensitive lipase cleaves adipose tissue triacylglycerol to give rise to glycerol and fatty acid right so what does it do it causes peripheral lipolysis in adipose tissue which means it's a catabolic enzyme 
hormone sensitive lipase is a catabolic enzyme which will be stimulated by the catabolic hormone glucagon okay how about other choices lipoprotein lipase is an anabolic enzyme yes or no can any one of you tell me what is the function of lipoprotein lipase the function of lipoprotein lipase is that this is the enzyme which will be clinging to the vessel wall and this lipoprotein lipase keeps acting on chylomicrons or any lipoproteins triacylglycerol cleaves this triacylglycerol to give glycerol and fatty acid thereafter both glycerol and fatty acid will enter into the cell okay and within the cell this fatty acid will be stored as triacylglycerol so tell me what kind what kind of an enzyme is this lipoprotein lipase is it a catabolic enzyme or an anabolic enzyme lipoprotein lipase helps the tissue yes it helps tissues to extract fatty acid to store the fatty acid as triacylglycerol so lipoprotein lipase is an anabolic enzyme if it's an anabolic enzyme it will be stimulated by insulin so do you understand the differences between lipoprotein lipase and hormone sensitive lipase lipoprotein lipase is an anabolic enzyme which helps in extracting triacylglycerol from lipoproteins hormone sensitive lipase is a catabolic enzyme which causes peripheral lipolysis and so lipoprotein lipase will be stimulated by the anabolic hormone which is insulin and hormone sensitive lipase will be stimulated by the catabolic hormone which is glucagon okay so whenever there is low insulin glucagon ratio or in other words whenever there is high glucagon hormone sensitive lipase will get stimulated okay now which of the following micronutrient deficiencies can cause poor wound healing good pratisha okay this question was not in the paper okay uh, i am assuming that this question was part of another question am i right so i think this was part of acrodermatitis entropathica yeah there was a child who was presenting with perioral rash rashes or perianal rashes presenting with diarrhea there was also poor wound healing so poor wound healing is a feature of both zinc deficiency and copper deficiency do you all understand this poor wound healing is a feature of both zinc deficiency and copper deficiency but yes yeah i heard it yes so uh, but if given a choice like this yeah if given a choice like this with both copper and zinc then go for copper because copper is necessary as a cofactor for lysyl oxidase which helps in collagen cross linkage formation and collagen is necessary for wound healing so poor wound healing is a feature of what all of you remember it's a feature of both zinc deficiency and copper deficiency given a choice you can go for copper deficiency but if the history says as don't study mbbs has mentioned it if the history says there is a person who is presenting with perioral rate rashes and this person also presents with diarrhea with poor or delayed wound healing healing in that case that is a case of dermatitis acrodermatitis entropathica in which case your answer should be zinc is that clear to all of you the biochemical basis of scurvy is and i was told that uh, this was also a history case based mcq there was a child or a person presenting with petechiae right there was a child presenting with petechiae and what is the reason for bleeding in this condition yeah, if that is a the question then what is your right answer good pratyusha good sam good don't study mbbs Okay. Now four of you are answering. I am ending the poll. So what is the biochemical basis of? They asked straightly, is it? Okay. 
So the biochemical basis of scurvy is it is impact collagen synthesis. So we know vitamin C deficiency. Vitamin C is necessary as a cofactor for what all of you? Vitamin C is necessary as a cofactor for proline hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase, both of which are involved in the post-translational modification of collagen. Right after hydroxylation, it undergoes oxidation and then cross linkage happens. So whenever there is vitamin C deficiency, impact collagen synthesis happens. So in the blood vessels, subendothelial connective tissue is weaker, and that causes petechiae, which is a feature of scurvy. Okay. Okay. Answer this. Very good, don't study MBBS, Pratyusha, Sam. Anjali. What do you think is the right answer? Let's summarize the history. What does the history state? According to history, there is a person who's presenting with exercise intolerance. And during exercise intolerance, when the person complains of painful, uh, briefly discussed tarot, yes. Yeah, I will tell you. Um, so this is a person who's presenting with painful muscle cramp was provided, right? The first history said there is a painful muscle cramp following exercise. And when the blood sample was collected soon after exercise, there was low glucose and low lactate level. So that is classically McArdle's disease. Because what is McArdle's disease? Tell me. McArdle's disease is type 5 glycogen storage disorder, wherein the enzyme which is defective is muscle phosphorylase. When muscle phosphorylase is defective, what is going to happen? Do you know that your muscle is dependent on yeah, your muscle is dependent on glycogenolysis for anaerobic glycolysis to happen Yeah, in your muscle. If your muscle has to use anaerobic glycolysis, it has got two choices. One is to get glucose from the circulation. The other one is to get glucose from its own glycogen. What will it prefer to use? It is going to prefer to use its own glycogen. So only when glycogen phosphorylase is active, this glycogen can give rise to glucose 1-phosphate. Then this glucose 1-phosphate goes through anaerobic glycolysis, giving rise to lactate. That is when the muscle gets ATP. But in this case, what is defective? There is a defect of glycogen phosphorylase. Without glycogen phosphorylase, what will not be generated? ATP will not be generated. Without ATP, the muscle cannot relax. Do you all know that not only for contraction, even to bring about relaxation, your muscle needs ATP? We all remember that not only for contraction, even for relaxation, your muscle needs ATP, right? So without ATP, the muscle is not able to relax. And that is the reason for painful muscle cramps. So what will it present as? It will present as painful muscle cramps following exercise because of ATP deficiency. And because there is no glycogenolysis and because there is no anaerobic glycolysis, what will happen to lactate level in the blood? Lactate level in the blood decreases. And once the muscle senses that its glycogen is not able to provide glucose, somehow muscle will start getting uh, glucose from the circulation. Because its glycogen is not able to provide glucose, muscle will start taking glucose from the circulation. That is why post-exercise, immediately after exercise, there is a marginal decline in blood glucose and there is a decline in lactate level. Do you all understand this? So this is classical of which condition? This is classical of McArdle's disease. Okay. So what is McArdle's disease? McArdle's disease is type 5 glycogen storage disorder. There is an enzyme that is defective is muscle phosphorylase and it presents as exercise intolerance when they complain of painful muscle cramps. At that time, if you estimate blood glucose and blood lactate level, both will be low. Okay. And uh, who wanted me to talk about, yeah, don't study MBBS, wanted me to talk about Tarot's disease. 
Tarot's disease is type 7 glycogen storage disorder, wherein the enzyme that is defective is phosphofructokinase 1. So all of you tell me what is expected when phosphofructokinase 1 is defective. Again, what will not happen? Glycolysis does not happen. No ATP. That also causes muscle cramps. Yeah, even in Tarouis disease, there will be muscle cramp following exercise. But additionally, in Tarouis disease, because it's a glycolytic enzyme defect, RBCs get affected the most. Haven't I told you this uh, repeatedly that RBCs completely are dependent on glycolysis? So whenever there is a glycolytic enzyme defect, like in Tarouis disease, RBCs get affected the most. And that will present as hemolytic anemia. So all of you tell me what will be the presenting feature of Tarouis disease. Tarouis disease presents as hemolytic anemia plus exercise intolerance. Do you see any hemolytic anemia picture here? No. And that is why it is not Tarouis. Can it be von Gierke's disease? Had it been von Gierke's, the principal presenting feature would be hypoglycemia. No parent of a child with von Gierke will be worried about the pain after the exercise. The child will complain, the parent will complain predominantly of hypoglycemia. Okay. And what have I told you about Anderson's disease? Anderson's disease will present as hepatomegaly and liver cirrhosis. Does not present as hypoglycemia or as exercise intolerance. So what is the right answer here? The right answer here is McCardles. Okay. So another glycogen storage disorder based question. That's why I told you out of 16 MCQs, all the 16 MCQs were covered in just two topics. Okay. Just in vitamins and inborn errors of metabolism. Give me a Okay. So what is this MCQ? What is the history? Can you try answering this? Good, Pratyusha. Don't study MBBS and Anjali. Yeah. So what is the history? If I ask you to summarize, what would you say? Again, exercise intolerance. The mother also complained that the child was more hungry between meals. So this is a child who's presenting with both hypoglycemia and exercise intolerance. And in all my sessions, I told you when there is a combination of hypoglycemia and exercise intolerance, it is type 3 or Cori's disease. And this Cori's disease is caused by the defect of debranching enzyme. Haven't I told you? Caused by the defect of debranching enzyme. But in this case, what do you think about glycogen content of the liver? Yeah, liver examination revealed no glycogen. In Cori's disease, which is just a debranching enzyme defect, what you would see is an abnormal glycogen accumulates. This abnormal glycogen will have multiple branch points. That is why this condition is called as amylopectinosis, right? That is why this condition is called as amylopectinosis. So it will not be this condition, right? In, yeah, yes, you're right. Alpha dextrins accumulate. So had it been Cori's disease or a debranching enzyme defect, that would have been accumulation of alpha dextrins. But here it says no glycogen. That is why it is not Cori's disease or debranching enzyme defect. So what probably is the right answer here? It is glycogen synthase. Because glycogen synthase defect, glycogen synthesis is supposed to happen both in liver and in muscle. If liver glycogen is not synthesized, that will cause hypoglycemia. Between meals, that will be hypoglycemia. If muscle is not able to synthesize glycogen, that will present as exercise intolerance. So whenever you see hypoglycemia and exercise intolerance, it is Cori's disease, which is one of the glycogen storage disorders, or it is glycogen storage disorder type 0. What is it? That is glycogen synthase defect. 
got it so why is it called as glycogen storage disorder type 0 because in this condition is there any glycogen which is stored no so you should not call it as glycogen storage disorder that is why it has got a suffix 0 okay so answer here is choice d what is the right answer i'm not going to raise a poll for this i think um, this is one of the mcqs which every one of you would have gotten right yeah so bow legs is what you see here bow legs is nothing but rickets so i think uh, this time the aim of uh, uh, national board of examination is to help every one of you get the uh, eligibility mark right that is how i found the question paper to be definitely all of you men not just you when i say you men all of those have written like two lakh people must have attended this exam i'm very sure most of them would have gotten the eligibility mark because at least 20 mcqs the straightforward mcqs right so answer this please 2.9 lakhs is it i'm very sure more than 2.5 would get the eligibility mark Good Pratyusha, good non study MBBS, Anjali. So, what does the history state? History clearly states that there is perioral pustular lesion. Yeah, so this is acrodermatitis. Acrodermatitis plus diarrhea, acrodermatitis entropathica. So, which is caused by what? Zinc malabsorption, right? This is an autosomal recessive disorder, which is characterized by or characterized by zinc malabsorption and presents with uh, perioral or perianal skin rashes, and they also present with diarrhea and delayed wound healing. Okay. Person presented with neurological manifestations mimicking upper motor neuron palsy and sensory neuropathy. Okay. So upper motor neuron palsy means there is motor deficit and sensory neuropathy means there is sensory deficits. So you see combined neuronal degeneration. Good don't study MBBS, good Srijanjali, Anjali. So what do you see? You see a combination of both motor deficit and sensory deficit, which means there is subacute combined degeneration. And along with subacute combined degeneration, the person is also presenting with anemia. So subacute combined degeneration with anemia is B12 deficiency, right? Yeah, that is B12 deficiency. Had it been B9 or folate deficiency, it should have presented only with anemia, no neurological manifestations, right? So B3 deficiency, three Ds of pellagra. What are the three Ds of pellagra? Diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. Thiamine deficiency will present as dry beriberi or wet beriberi. In dry beriberi, neurons will be involved, of course. But in wet beriberi, cardiovascular system will get affected. And in either case, it is not going to present with motor deficits or sensory deficits. Thiamine deficiency will present as encephalopathy, right? Yeah, what is encephalopathy? Vernix encephalopathy, wherein predominantly mammillary body gets affected. When mammillary body gets affected, there is a defect of paper circuit, which is related to processing the information. So when a person is not able to process information, what kind of neurological manifestation do you expect in thiamine deficiency? They present with confusion, right? They present with global confusion or they present with amnesia. They don't present with motor or sensory defects, okay? So the answer here is B12 deficiency. Now, can you tell me what are the two coenzyme roles of B12? I'm assuming that most of you will be aiming to write your INICT. So this discussion will help you in solving MCQs for your INICET. So watch this carefully. What are the two coenzyme forms of B12? One is adenosyl B12. The other one is methyl B12. Right? 
Adenosyl B12 acts as a coenzyme for methyl malonyl CoA mutase. All of you, please memorize it. Adenosyl B12 acts as a coenzyme for methyl malonyl CoA mutase, which converts methyl malonyl CoA to succinyl CoA. So, when this enzyme is defective, methyl malonyl CoA accumulates and that causes methyl malonic aciduria. And this methyl malonic acid gets incorporated into myelin. And that causes demyelination. And this demyelination is the reason for neurological manifestations that you observe in B12 deficiency. Have you all understood this? So tell me what is the reason for neurological manifestations? Very good, don't study MBBS. What is the reason for neurological manifestations in B12 deficiency? That is because of adenosyl B12 deficiency and methyl malonyl CoA mutase defect. Okay, that is when methyl B12 is defective, the function of methyl B12 is to convert what? It is to convert homocysteine to methionine because methyl B12 acts as a coenzyme for methionine synthase. And this methyl B12 gets its methyl group from methyl tetrahydrofolate. Okay, so now tell me what is expected in B12 deficiency. I want all of you to answer. Wherever there is B12 deficiency, there is no methyl B12. So what accumulates? Homocysteine accumulates. And that is why B12 deficiency presents as homocysteine urea. Okay. And additionally, when there is low B12, there is nothing to accept the methyl group from tetrahydrofolate. So all tetrahydrofolate will be trapped as methyl tetrahydrofolate. And this causes methylfolate trap. Do you all understand this? This causes methylfolate trap. And that indirectly causes folate deficiency. And when there is folate deficiency, that causes macrocytic anemia. Okay. So tell me, why do you see macrocytic anemia and B12 deficiency? Because B12 deficiency precipitates folate deficiency. Do you understand this? Because B12 deficiency precipitates folate deficiency. Why does it precipitate folate deficiency? Because methyl B12 will be deficient. So methionine synthase will be inactive. So homocysteine will not be converted to methionine. And all tetrahydrofolate will be trapped as methyl tetrahydrofolate. So can you summarize and tell me what are the manifestations of B12 deficiency? I want all of you to answer. B12 deficiency will cause number one neurological manifestations yeah initially it will present a sensory neuropathy that then progresses to subacute combined degeneration number two not only neurological it will present with methyl melonic aciduria and then when methyl b12 is defective that causes homocysteine urea not only homocysteine urea it causes methyl folate trap and because of this methylfolate trap, what you would expect is a macrocytic anemia. Okay, got it? So these are the features of B12 deficiency. So clearly the answer for the previous question, wherein there are neurological manifestations presenting with anemia would be B12 deficiency. So this is a very simple MCQ, right? All these MCQs we had already discussed, right? During the revision session, I told you about all these MCQs. So tell me respiratory distress syndrome is caused by the deficiency of. Yeah, it is caused. No, it is not sphingomyelin. Respiratory distress syndrome is caused by the defect of surfactant. And what is the major chemical composition of surfactant? It is dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine. What is phosphatidylcholine? It is lecithin, right? It is lecithin. So respiratory distress syndrome is caused by the deficiency of lecithin. Got it? Okay. I was told that this question was a bit different. I was told that a chronic alcoholic presented with gout-like manifestations, uh, all of the following would be true except, right? No, which of the following would be true? One choice was low NADH-NAD ratio. In a chronic alcoholic, there will be high NADH-NAD ratio. Because alcohol, when it is metabolized, first it's metabolized by alcohol dehydrogenase and then by an aldehyde dehydrogenase. In the presence of both these enzymes, NADH will be generated. 
so there will be high nadh nad ratio are you all clear about this in a chronic alcoholic there is always high nadh nad ratio because of high nadh nad ratio all pyruvate will be converted to lactate yeah all pyruvate yes i know that yeah you're right so all pyruvate will be converted to lactate so lactate level will be high and because there is lactic acidosis there will be competition between lactic acid and uric acid to get secreted in the renal tubule when there is lactic acidosis predominantly lactic acids will get secreted so uric acid accumulates and that causes hyperuricemia so tell me why do you see hyperuricemia in a chronic alcoholic because there is lactic acidosis and this lactic acidosis precipitates hyperuricemia that is why they present with gout like manifestations so what is the right answer for this question a chronic alcoholic there will be high nadh nad ratio there will be high lactate and high urate and i was told that there was one choice which said low urea no high urea right high urea or low urea i'm not very sure i don't think that is not a component that's not a feature of chronic alcoholism okay so answer for this question is high lactate and high urate blessed to have a mentor like you i am very happy shnizel i am very happy that you got all mcqs right yeah good Uh, a child's urine turns dark on standing. What what is uh, what is a mark that you expect, Nizar? Totally. What is your score? Tentative or probable score? Don't study MBBS. What do you think your score would be? Anywhere around seven hundred seven five fifty. Okay, that's a good score, Nizar. That's a good score. Uh, don't study in BBS. What is your expectation? Of course, between five hundred and six hundred, there is always crowding. One sixty-five to one seventy, correct? Good. Okay. There'll always be crowding between five hundred and six hundred, but definitely you'll get the PG seat of your choice. Listen. So a child's urine turns dark on standing. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is alkaptonuria. Okay. Congenital erythropoietic porphyria will present as port wine urine, red color urine. Type one tyrosinemia uh, is uh, can sometimes, but I was told that there was phenylketonuria in the choice, right? I was told that there was phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria does not present with urine turning dark on standing. SPM questions were difficult. Oh, I heard the distractors were very close. Am I right? Yeah, many students told me that SPM questions were difficult. Only those who had read uh, read Park will be able to answer apparently. Yeah. So type one tyrosinemia can even present with the urine turning dark on standing. But I was told that there was no type one uh, tyrosinemia. It was phenylketonuria, which does not present with black urine so black urine diseases i'll cap to you don't worry about it don't study in case you'll get a good score good mark good pg seat of your choice okay so that's all for today so these are the 16 mcqs which are asked in neat pg 2023 Okay, I hope you all got everything correct. And even if you had not gotten correct, please don't uh, get disheartened. There is always, um, yeah, you will get a good score this time. And even otherwise, you have your INI CT next, right? So uh, keep up the good spirit. Relax for some time. Yeah, uh, pat yourself for what you have done so far. Be happy. See you all when you start preparing for INI CT. Okay. Okay, I'll start. I will start INI CT session soon. Okay, this month itself will start. Okay, thank you. Good night. Um.